What's up, people? Um, we're here for episode three of our podcast. Uh, no exaggeration. I'm here with a really special guy. His name is Katoni Ali. He, I've known him for a while now back at school, but he's someone that's an interna- international rugby union player for Tonga. And he is also, uh, he also plays over in Australia too, but we'll get to all the details soon. First, I just want to say the reason why I'm wearing a hat we were catching up and this guy we didn't talk about anything but he goes oh bro man our, our hairlines are going real bad eh so, so he mentioned me talking about my hairline that's why I'm wearing a hat so yeah that's why I'm wearing a hat but Donnie thank you for coming bro this guy again he's like Jamie he's he's uh, inspired a lot of people he's a really really humble guy and that's that's no joke and he's doing me the favor here um you know, using his time here to come over so he's while he's here over in Australia. But yeah, Donnie, thanks you for coming, man. Pleasure, mate. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, bro. Um, so before we kick off, um, I just want to say, just give us an introduction about yourself, please. Just quickly who you are, where you're from, little things like that. Yeah, um, obviously, as Malachi said, um, my name is Godoni Ali. Uh, you know, I knew Malachi... Um, <laughs> Oh, I met Malakai and Maroska Grandma. Uh, you know, got two brother, uh, brother and a sister. And I've always grown up and I uh, love my time in Maroska and that's why I always come home to uh, see my family, but also, you know, uh, live in, uh, experience the neighborhood that I uh, once lived in. You actually, before Maroska, you're from Oruhu, eh? Yeah. So, it's, so how did you end up from Oruhu down to Maroska? Because I mean, if you're from Oruhu, I guess you would have went to schools in that area. But what? How did you end up in Mount Roscoe, even though you're from Oruhu? Yeah. So my auntie had a place in Mount Roscoe, and she just thought, and then my parents thought, you know, for my schooling, it might be better to go to Mount Roscoe Grammar. Oh, okay. Than attending one of the schools in um, Oruhu, so like Oruhu um, OC or Oruhu College. And for me, you know, it was a new, um, bit of a new experience. And uh, you know something that you know for me it was, it was I thought it was good to go to a different school in a different uh, environment and neighborhood and you know and I got to meet you <laughs> <laughs> and you got to make fun of my hairline, <laughs> bro. In, okay, cool. So you obviously live in Australia now. Uh, you live in Manly. So how does how do you so how do you end up in Australia? So how long have you been there now? Been there. Fifteen years now. Fifteen years. Yeah. So, how do you end up in Australia? Fifteen years. How, how did you get there? So, firstly, um, obviously went for a schooling opportunity. Um, our coach, which you know quite well, is our Nick, uh, which uh, everyone says is a bad, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but he knew our coach um, at the time at. Um, St. Augustine's College, which yep. is in uh, Brookvale or Sydney, and because their relationship through their uh, footing, uh, sorry, footy commitments, you know, they're, they're establishing whether it's a rugby program yep. um, over there, and it just gave us the opportunity to uh, to move over and you know try something new. And and for me, um, you know, the experience itself was just something that you know I, I'll never regret. And um, and the decision as well. Sorry, and it's just I've enjoyed every moment of it, and being over in Australia, that's why I haven't decided to move back home. Yeah. So, so you moved over to Australia. So we'll just dig a bit deeper. So, what decision? How, what decision did you have to make to get over to Australia? So, was it? It was a scholarship, right? Yeah. So how did? So you got offered a scholarship through Nick. And how, how did that come about? Did you, did Nick just shoulder tap you and say, there's a scholarship available for you to go over to Australia or? Yeah, kind of like it was, I think it's more worded as an opportunity. Um, oh, I, okay. You know, I think more um, at the time it was, you know, it was either a decision to stay here and, um, you know, and be comfortable in your, in your own environment and yep. with, you know, with my mates and, and my family or, you know, try something different, um, you know, the, the unknown in front of you that I've never done before and which could lead to new opportunities. Nothing, it wasn't guaranteed. Oh, okay. And for me, it, it just made uh, 
sense to try something different and you know hopefully uh, it was going to better myself and better my family so that's why I decided to uh, take on the opportunity and and it made it a bit easier as well that one of my good mates uh, took the journey with me yeah so you know when you when you have to make a decision whether to go or not what is making you want to stay and what is making you want to go yeah so I think family was a big one to stay to stay yeah um, you know as, as you know growing up in a Tongan not just Tom and family, but Ireland the family. They they're always close with their um with their with their family. Um, yep. You know they don't like to move away too far from their family because connection and, and and family ties are quite um, important in the Tom and culture. Yeah. So family was a big um reason why I wanted to stay. Um, friends as well. As as I mentioned earlier, I was just comfortable. I've I've um already made a decision to move from Motherhu to Mara School. And um, at the time, so I started to slowly finding my feet and creating friends and um, getting to know the environment. And then it was another option to move again and start fresh. So um, that was another um, decision to stay. Yep. But if I wasn't going to go, you know, it was always going to be, oh, what if? That was always a yeah, question yeah, yeah. that was always going to be on my mind if I didn't decide to um, move to Australia. So, you know, at the end of the day, I think I kind of sat down and weighed up the pros and cons of, of going and, um, and staying. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you always have your friends and family that that's always going to be here if you come home and, and see them, etc. So, yeah. and, all, you know, all the opportunities that you can kind of gauge what's in front of you here and then know where you're going whereas you know there was an unknown and um there was no guarantee um in the opportunity that i was given to go to australia so for me i was just i just wanted to uh whether it's explore that opportunity a bit more and and find out you know what it could lead to so for me i, I just wanted to explore that and, and create something just for myself and yeah and you know maybe grow as a person as well cool so you know because there will be kids who are in Auckland who got to make that decision whether to head overseas for an opportunity like you. What would you say, what would you, I guess, what would you tell them to expect that they might not expect? Um, like what are some of the challenges that you don't really kind of understand until you get there? Yeah, so probably homesickness or being homesick is, is a big one, yep. especially at a young age. If you're going to leave at a young age, which I left just as I turned 14, I, I went over there. Yeah. And um, you know, as I said earlier, with not having your, well, sorry, for always having your family around you, and then going to you know no one around you at all, yep. and the you know across the um the ditch and you know phone calls the only thing that ties you together to your family so homesickness was quite um quite good but also quite um a challenge but as i mentioned earlier having my best one of my best friends there made it a bit easier at least you can um relate to someone so that's another tough one as well um being put i'm um, putting in a different environment where you've gone from all islanders around you and all pacific yeah. islanders sorry um community to we don't have many around you at all and it's a different culture over there yeah and um so that's always going to be a challenge as well so and also trying to find your feet because you don't have those support networks over there but if there was advice i could give to someone moving over there is try and embrace the opportunity just embrace it embrace it yeah, yeah. so true um as i said earlier the, the culture side of things you know if you be yourself and, and be true to who you are people will start to to realize what sort of person you are and if they're drawn to you automatically by by who you are then you know that's all you can do sometimes you know people are you know whether they're threatened or or they feel like they need to change so they can fit into an environment yeah you know if there was any advice it's just to be yourself, be and, yourself. and embrace the opportunity try and create as um, many friendships as possible yeah for me i was obviously lucky enough to um play rugby and, and go to a school so well, you know i created um friends automatically with the, the rugby community yeah and then that led to um you know further friendships just around the school as, as you get to know people and um, etc so cool so so for you going to australia it's for rugby right i mean everything else but a big part of it is rugby so what 
because we all know you're a good rugby player and you were a good rugby player. What age or what kind of time period in your life did you did you actually consider I can actually make something of being a rugby player or you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, is there a point in time or is there a season or or an age where you like fire? I'm I'm good enough to have a crack at it and I could possibly go the whole way. Can you remember a time where, where that becomes more of a reality? Like to yourself? Because we all know you're good, but you know what I mean? Yeah. For you to really understand like, oh, I can, I can actually, I could crack it. Yeah, I guess, uh, and by the way, I'm just not all about rugby, I've got some no. brains too. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you take your jacket off? Your jacket some, on <laughs> maybe some looks too, but you might disagree. But um, yeah, no, probably when I, as I finished school, over like, there, over there, yeah, um, being put into a sort of a oh, you want to say professional, semi-pro environment where you got to rub shoulders if, with some, you know, um, rugby players they might have idolised growing up. Oh, okay, yeah, and getting to whether it's just to be on the, be in the same gym as them or it's hard to even to get to that place eh? yeah yeah. so even to, just to be in the gym with them or, or train with them yeah. was just a moment there where you, where you sat down and said oh maybe I, maybe I can do it yeah but it wasn't until that moment that it, that I thought that I could make it as a, as a rugby player oh yeah that's cool yeah so you know you just sometimes feel like if you're good enough to be here with them then mm. you know you know you start to think oh maybe you know dreams can come true and, yeah. and you can make this a reality but I mean um, what going over before before going over or while you're going over did you s- place expectations on yourself and if you did what were they if not that's cool yeah I'd, to be honest I probably didn't really have many expectations on, on myself. I was probably young and still, you know, as, as you know, we're both, you know, young and we up to a bit of mischief when you were at that age. Well, that, that's you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't really um, have many expect, expectations, but I think I was just a bit more excited to... Um, to see what was what was ahead, I guess, and, and yeah. over there in Australia, you know, I, I did a little a little bit of um, research to where I was going, and it looked like a nice place. Yeah, and um, I was just like, oh, you know, can't wait to get over there and, and explore and, and and get to um, get to know the place itself and the people yeah. around it and, and what makes it special, I guess. But um, yeah, as I said, I was probably young, and all I wanted to do was at that stage was probably play footy, <laughs> as you probably know. That's school. not what you said, though. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, there was no expectations, but it was more just for me to make the most of this opportunity that I was given. Yeah. Not many people are given such a, a big opportunity, and um, I just wanted to make the most of it, and um, and yeah, and don't regret anything. Mm. Cool. So, the school you went to was St. Augustine's A. Yeah. How do you pronounce it? Uh, St. Augustine's Saint okay. College, yeah. Sorry. So, tell I'm me a bit about it. Be better. <laughs> tell me a bit about that school. Where is that school? Is it in Sydney? Yeah, so it's in Sydney um, in a suburb called Brookvale, uh, Brookvale. Oh, there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty much... It's across the road from uh, the Seagulls home ground, mm. which um, it's also in Brookvale over, which is called cool. a lot of land, and you know it's great school, Catholic school, um, all boys from year five to year twelve. Oh, okay, and it's a rugby school. Eh? Oh, yeah, is it a rugby school. You, a lot of people say rugby, but it's got a lot of sports. So you know, rugby, oh, okay. soccer, as big as well, cricket. Yeah. Um, you know, and interestingly, you know. Um, it's got Brookville over across the road, but we don't really play much uh, league at the school. So. Yeah. Cool. So when so you're going up St Augustine's, yep. and you're coming from Mount Russell Grammar, was there was there a, a big difference in the actual schools besides it being all boys? Yeah, so the girls stuck. <laughs> Is that where you're going? Is that you're crying? Like, <laughs> Were you crying because it's all boys? <laughs> Bro, no one knows this guy now. <laughs> yeah, but um. Yeah, what is it like? Is it like a preppy school or? Yeah, so similar to you'd probably say your Kings. Oh, okay. And um, maybe your St Kent's or Auckland Grammar. So it's an all boys school. Um, 
as I said, so winter's pretty much a full suit. Yeah. So oh, pants okay. and, and blazer jacket tie, and then in summer it's obviously the, you get the shorts and the and the long socks and the collared shirt and tie as well. So, um, and, and it is a private school as well, so that probably explains why we have to wear suits, etc. Catholic school, so the religious side of it, um, that was something new. Yeah. Obviously, it wasn't. I've always been brought up as a religious, you know, Tongan with my family background, but being educated at, in a, school, at school yeah. and one of the subjects was religion. Yeah. It was um, something new as well. Obviously, the uniform, um, as you mentioned, the, the girls, but the, yeah, no problems there with myself, maybe for you. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> <laughs> Hi, bro. No, I get yeah, and then, and then probably the biggest thing is, as I said earlier, just not many um, Pacific Islander boys that you can relate to over there as well. So yeah. being an all boys school, you know, I could relate to um, Tavita, who I went over with. But besides that, there wasn't many um, Pacific Islander boys that I could relate to, and, and that's where we, Tavita and I, had to get out of our comfort zone yeah. and get to know the the boys for you know who they are and, and what they enjoy, and yeah, you know, and that's where you find um, or create the friendships through the common interests that you might have, and and for us it was rugby. Yeah. So you you know Jamie, right? Yeah. Jamie Henry. So when you came on, we were talking about. Um, so for him we were talking about it's, it's ironic for him because he plays for Japan and we were saying that you know back at school if everyone was to pick say three names that they thought are going to crack or have a good chance of cracking at rugby his name wouldn't be one of them and you know it's not a bad thing yeah. but that's what it was but your name would have been one of the names that you know we would have said does you know does being looked at as a really good player what does that do for you personally does it do anything like does it give you confidence does it give you that drive to to, to play harder or to play better or anything like that or does it do you just ignore it yeah probably at times I, yeah I just ignore it probably yeah but at other times you know like especially at, at my age now and um especially some of the you know the teams that you know you, you make when you're younger yeah. you look back and go you know mm, you know what's what happened. You know where where did it all change? And and now you know you know as as you mentioned, you know Jamie um, has you know made the Japanese team. Yeah. You know made footy a bit of a lifestyle for himself. Yeah. And that's always something that I've you know questioned whether you know. I'm, you know, how come I didn't get that opportunity or not the opportunity but like I could have been in that situation yeah. from what you were just saying at school you know and, and sometimes you know, a lot of people say oh did you just pick at school oh do people say that say, oh not, not sometimes but you know you always feel to yourself yeah, yeah, whether yeah, people yeah. are thinking that you know, yeah. when, especially when you got such big raps on you especially when you have big raps when you're young yeah. I'm not saying I did have big reps, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you said before. No, no, no. no yeah. <laughs> no, but as 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 um as I mentioned earlier with um playing with Jamie and stuff, a lot of people might have said, "Oh, look, he could be the next big thing." Yeah. Or um, you know, he could play for the All Blacks, etc. Yeah. From a young age and then, and then from there when when you see people now and, and you haven't made those or you haven't met those expectations yeah. they're like oh so you know you could you could have been there you know or what, why yeah, yeah, yeah. why aren't you in the all but that's from the outside yeah, yeah. That's exactly from the outside. And, and then you know sometimes um, the the it plays with your mind a bit mm. like you know you start to question oh what could have I changed to yeah. or what happened that I'm not you know not as good as I was when I was young maybe yeah. you know boys obviously get bigger stronger yeah. or, or whether you know I wasn't as good as people yeah. you know thought of me or put yeah. me out to be so for you the best thing was to just ignore it yeah probably just ignore it and and, and probably work hard yeah and, that's cool because you you've, man you've, we're going to talk about it later on with your injury and playing for Tonga and that because you've done well man it's, especially after that crazy injury we'll touch on it later yeah but so for people so for anyone that might be be getting big reps as a kid would you say the best thing is just to ignore it for now is yeah. that what you'd say yeah probably like <laughs> probably say I know it's going to be hard especially yeah. at a young age not to buy into all the hype etc yeah but you know if you know you if people have those raps it's because you're good enough to, to be there so yeah true you know don't um, don't let and obviously don't let it get to your head just keep going or keep doing 
what you've been doing. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and a lot of times it's, it's because you play it because you enjoy it. Yeah. And and people see that and because you're enjoying it, you know, it might seem that you, you're well above everyone else. Mm. But you're just doing something you enjoy. Yeah. Cool. So while you're at St. Augustine's, yeah. um, is that when, because I know you played for the Australian schoolboys, was that while you're at, does that, do you have to be at high school to yeah, play for so, the schoolboys? So now they've changed it, but you, yeah, back then you had to be at school to play for schoolboys. Yeah. But obviously, you know, both here in um, Australia, some boys finish um, school young, at a young age, whether they're 17 and then they go and start uni and they're 18, so they can, st- but they've changed it to under 18s now. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So instead of schoolboys, it's called under 18s. Yeah. Okay. So you played for the Australian schoolboys, even though you've been in New Zealand most of your life. Eh? Yeah. So how did that come about? Did they did they ask you about your? Is it well? Obviously, you would have been eligible. Yeah. But how did it come about? Did they did they just ask you if you were keen? Yeah. Obviously, um, we're going back a long time now, but um. Oh yeah. Showing our age. <laughs> your age. <laughs> <laughs> but um. I'm only one month older than you, bro. <laughs> but um. Yeah, so obviously I'm assuming the same system here for the for the rep trials and stuff. So you, you go play for your school and then you get selected to represent your competition. Yeah. And then from your competition, you get rep- you get selected to represent your state. Yeah. And then there's a um, state state comp there where where you play all the different states. So Queensland. Um, we call it like so south like so victoria so which is melbourne so it goes under the state not yeah. not melbourne and then you know western australia etc and then from there they select the um, australian school boys and oh true and for me it was different you know the, the it's funny and also the the hardest um thing to, to realize as well that because of my last name which is a if your name doesn't get it goes by oh, alphabetical order oh true so you'll know quick yeah so if it goes straight to someone that has b as their last name yeah. you, you know you, you have you made didn't make the cut yeah so that was all, <laughs> all you know so we the first name oh it's so insane here so first year um uh, I didn't. I didn't make it. Okay. Yep. And then, but I got a late call in to represent the Australian A in a few games. Oh, okay. And then the second year, Australian they, A is it for the adults? No, no, no. So the, oh, they two have teams. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the, the 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 first team and then the, the second team and then the following year, yeah, I was lucky enough to have my name mentioned and and yeah, so I was, that was a pretty proud uh, proud moment for myself. But and it, in regards to the eligibility rule. Um, I know I was, you know, I came from New Zealand and I'm attending a school in, in Australia and that's what made me um, eligible for the selection. Did part of you say, bro, I am being a traitor at the moment playing for it? And I'm just like, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. not saying you are, but I'm saying like, did part of you go, bro, I'm playing for Australia against New Zealand and I've only been in Australia for three years. <laughs> For three years. <laughs> yeah, probably. Wait, wait, so you were 14. <laughs> so, you were, so three years, but you were in New Zealand for 14 years. So that makes me, as a mess, I'm just waiting. To <laughs> wait, 14, 14 years versus three years. Yeah. And all of a sudden you got this accent. <laughs> no, no, no. What, I mean, like, did, did it? Oh, no. To be honest, oh, it didn't really phase me, to be honest. Like, um... I, I just felt like that, you know, my life was in Australia. I've been given a few opportunities and yep. being in Australia, so I just wanted to make the most of, of the opportunity I was given in, in regards to the selection. And if I was to be honest, I was probably more excited to face the hacker. Yeah, yeah true way. To, to be on the um, receiving end. I've always obviously growing up and participating in, 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 in um, performing several hackers. Yeah. And it's something very special. Yeah. Performing in it and obviously um, doing it. But then on the, you know, I've always wanted that feeling, you know, how the opposition feel in regards to um, yeah. how they take it all in. But yeah, it was just a surreal moment. And um facing the hug and it was yeah as I said I was just excited to obviously make the team firstly and um and to play the uh, New Zealand was and face the hacker was also another something that I was looking forward to cool so I was going to touch on that next so so you're playing so obviously to, to play to verse the hacker you have to face New Zealand right yeah. so I just asked you about it about an hour ago oh a couple of minutes ago so you guys played Wellington right Wellington uh, schools yeah as a and warm up yeah. as a warm up and yeah. then you guys lost yeah and then can you tell us a story about what was said after the game that leads to you guys beating the New Zealand team? 
Yeah, so yeah, as I mentioned, so we uh, we played Wellington Schools as a warm up to our game against New Zealand, and um, during the week that year, uh, Wellington Schools had a very strong. Um, playing group yeah, and then probably half that squad made the New Zealand team so they weren't available to play for Wellington schools against us that is it anyone that we, we might know there was uh, Julian Sevilla um, Kurt Barlow yeah there's a few big names in, in, in the, in the um, New Zealand side who have gone on to um, better and bigger things but um, yeah so we played Wellington schools and uh, we lost to them. Yep. And in the after match uh, function, we pretty much gauged from the speech of the Wellington coach that, you know, if we can't, couldn't beat the, the Wellington B side, how are we going to beat the Wellington A side? And as I said earlier, a lot of those Wellington players, half of them made the New Zealand school, so they, they weren't available to play for Wellington schools yep. that day. So they were rested for our um, test match a few, a week later. And um, I think the boys just use that as a bit of motivation and and, um, and a bit of cockiness from the Kiwis. But, yeah. you know, not being a Kiwi or sitting there and a lot of boys are going, oh, geez, those Kiwis are arrogant. Oh, true. But I was, you know, in my head, I was like, oh, they're not really. They're, he's just, you know. Just saying. Just saying that. Like, yeah. you know, not all Kiwis are like that. It's like, you know, not all um, cultures are like, you know, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of misrepresentation in, yeah. in the media lately. But I was just saying, as you said, I, I was recently in Australia but I've been living in um, New Zealand for longer at that time yeah. and in my head I was just like oh mate they're not all like that so um, yeah. you know that's just a bad re- representation but you know it was just adding a bit of fuel to, to the boys to yeah. um, you know go out in the test match and then just you know prove prove them wrong if, you guys and you guys ended up beating the New Zealand school boys yeah then. we ended up beating um, the New Zealand school team in uh, Taranaki and uh, yeah, I think a lot of the Wellington uh, hopefuls went over there to, you know, to hoping, obviously, you know, we're expecting yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. to see uh, New Zealand schools um, win. And, and, you know, in the after match, a lot of boys were quite surprised in, in our performance, etc. So. Yeah, but that's, I always like that. So you told me about three years ago. Yeah, but um, um, yeah, and because obviously when we played Wellington School, I'm not saying I was, a, yeah, we, I would, you know, I, I, I didn't play. Yeah. I was on a bench and it was just hard to, Oh no! Oh, sorry, I was in the stands because I, I they didn't name me in the, the starting squad that to play Wellington School. So for some of the boys that didn't play that Wellington School game, you would have watched the whole thing. We watched the whole thing, and yeah. then we we played the New Zealand schools um, yeah. team, and and a lot of them you can you can just see when we left the sheds, a lot of them just you know they they could you could tell they mean business, and yeah, and you know it was just. I think a lot of the boys were very surprised in the performance we put in, not just the, um, the New Zealand team, but just ourselves. It's like, you know, I think you know, a little bit of mo- motivation, you know, you can do a lot, yeah. of, a lot of things. But that's, that's a good story, man. Yeah. Um, so I can understand you playing for the schoolboys, yeah. but were you, did you make the decision or think about possibly just playing for the Wallabies? Like, did, could you, would, would that, like, you know, if if that came, would you have to think about it, or you wouldn't have had to think about it the way you didn't, you know, with the schoolboys? Yeah. Well, uh, to be honest, probably not. I probably would have chased the um, the Wallabies dream and or, yeah. or play for the Wallabies if it was um, if it came knocking on my, on my door. So it's proper commitment, eh? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as I said, and probably the main reasoning behind that is is now, you know. I probably almost lived longer in Australia than I did in New Zealand, so yeah. I pretty much call Australia home now. So and and a lot of you know I got a lot of you know family and friends over there now, and yeah. it's pretty much you built a home there. Eh? Yeah, I built yeah. My, a lifestyle and a home as yeah. well, you know, and and and, uh, and for me it's, it'll be right just to represent yeah. the place that I call home and, and you know the country I call home now. You know when it comes to rugby because you've played in. New Zealand and yeah. Australia. Yeah. What what do you think Australians do better than Kiwis in terms of rugby? Like you know, stuff to New Zealand comes naturally to all New Zealanders, yeah. and then you got Aussies. What comes naturally to them that they do really well, or that you guys do really well? I think they're just this the smart. Yeah. Like like I've, I've always said that playing in playing junior ranks here was always more physical. Yeah. And where when you when I went to Australia, it's it's a bit more um, 
expansive game where you, they try and move the ball a bit more instead of you know instead of instead of here where it's just, you just pick a guy and run straight up yeah or you know as, as a lot of boys say up the up the, up the guts yeah and then um but over there they try and use the ball and then find a strategy to you know whether to mismatches with props in the back line etc and, and then yeah. ex- exploit the holes or you know where, where those uh, lazy forwards are unfortunately so you okay so they focus more on a smart kind of thing yeah and, and, I mean it's not saying that New Zealand don't but yeah that's, the but that's what I've noticed and, and the speed is a bit quicker there as well yeah because they are trying to move the ball yeah because they say that about league a lot as well eh? yeah They're over there it's a lot faster a lot fitter yeah but like the biggest thing growing up here was uh, like uh, you can never take away the physicality from New yeah. Zealand rugby like it's always going to be a physical um, game yeah. and even when we uh, toured with our school St. Augustine's and we played a few teams here and a lot of the boys oh, true. would say after the game geez, that was physical yeah. you know like that's so much more physical than um, playing footy back at home etc so the physical side of things is, doesn't com- you know doesn't compare to New Zealand mm. footy but I feel like it's just a bit quicker players you know they like to move the ball a bit um side to side etc yep. and try and exploit those uh, unfortunately the lazy forwards like myself <laughs> cool. so I remember um, like I was saying before you are someone that was always really fit and I remember I saw in your profile on rugby on Australia rugby yeah. and it said that you like to play tennis so you're stalking me <laughs> <laughs> I was like did this guy tell everyone he's good at <laughs> did you tell everyone you're good at tennis <laughs> bro not on the days remember when we used to, used to beat me and yeah, I said bro. <laughs> that was go fetch against me bro. But you know, I won't get into that. Yeah, no, that's but, another day. But I, but even, but like you know, with the tennis quarters, you know, there's a track. I remember when we were when you were still here and we we're playing, we we're mucking around, and I remember you and your dad going there, and you'd do like 14 laps of the 400. Yeah. And I remember you doing that, and you were trying to crack that Auckland team, and. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying before that, you know, you've always been really fit. What, what are some, you know, if there's some kids that are trying to crack it, Yeah. what do you think, if you could say two things, two or three things that they got to stick to, Yeah. to have a chance, well, what would you think? What would you say, like, in your opinion? Yeah, probably maybe uh, work ethic is work a big it. one. Yeah. Like, like um, and what I mean by that is like, regardless of, of what you do, you, yep. always, you always put your best foot forward. So what I mean by that, you know, you could be like training, for example. It's, it's, it's easy to skip a few days if you're, if you're feeling a bit tired and, yep. and um, lazy, but making sure you, you get out, out of bed or you stop, you know, um, you know whether you're going to uh, go plan to see uh, friends and go to the movies, etc. but you know you, you have to do something or, or be somewhere for training. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just being there and working hard. I think it's just work ethics always been a big one for me. Like, um, you know, being island, Islanders, it's always fitness is not our favorite thing. Yeah. But if you're willing to work hard at it, slowly your fitness gets better or, or whether it's your game itself, yep. you know, tackling technique, um, passing. <coughs> passing hasn't been my... my <coughs> My best. Do uh, you pass? <laughs> nah, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> show and go. But we, yeah, I think work ethic is is a big one for for guys that that want to take it to the next level. Yep. So everyone that's willing to to work hard, as as you said, you know, the best trainer then my dad. Uh, yeah, running those laps. <laughs> Man, not the not the um. <laughs> Tough days, but um, bro, five, four, fourteen year old, over <laughs> and it's like you said, you know, you said you, there are things you want to do with other people, but you've got commitments. Yeah, that was one of them because I remember we were playing tennis, mucking around. Yeah, I'm sure the kid and you would rather play with us. Yeah, but you're over there doing fourteen laps. I'm like, that's, and that's that's long for an adult, let alone a kid. Yeah, so I think it was just there was just drive like you know yeah. your, your drive had to be quite strong because as you said I could have easily came in uh, yeah. played some tennis with you and we hit the ball around but um, you know I was just driven to try and make that that team so that's what it looks like eh, if you're trying to crack it stuff yeah. like that missing yeah. out on things that you'd rather do yeah because uh, you know probably a lot of you know even Jamie might say as yeah. well you've got to make a, a little a few sacrifices yeah. here and there to um to try and make it to the to the top top level yeah and um you know the the drive. You know those laps. You know every lap was uh, <laughs> was tough, but you're just driven. Uh, yeah. And it's just those little moments when um when your name gets called out in, in those teams. Yeah, yeah it's all they, worth it. That's a proud moment. Yeah, and that then that's when you go, oh, that was worth all the hard work because you make that team and mm. and then you reap the rewards. 
So, so you know when after after you left school and you're playing club, yeah. You you did play with Michael Hooper, right? I did, yeah. So uh, Michael was from the same club as I'm from, the Manly club. Yeah. What's the, that? The Manly Marlins, yeah. Marlins, yeah. Yeah. So we um, but we we uh, clash heads uh, before that. So we he. He went to the same, uh, sorry, he played for school in the same competition as, as St. Augustine's. Yeah. So he went to a school named St. Pius and and we used to, we played each other a few times in um. Oh, and in you're both comp. seven, eh? Yeah, both seven. So it was always a good, good tussle. You know, obviously now we can see the sort of uh, calibre of a player that Michael is. Yeah. Well, um, you know, but he was always very good at school as well. So he was always um, fit and, you know, and... And he is now, and he's showing it now as as Australian captain. So when you guys play together, would you go six? Yeah. So and when we play together, he'll go seven, I'll go six. Yeah. And that also occurred once. Um, sorry for a season at Manly as well. So he was making the transition from uh, the Brumbies to the Waratahs. Was it the Brumbies? Yeah, he started. Oh, I started the Brumbies. Yeah. So he went from there to to the Tars, and there was a bit of a. Um, we could you could say a waiting period, and then so yeah. he played for us for the year, and we just played um, six seven or left right as flankers. So then that, that was pretty uh, cool, um, you know, moment as well to, mm. to share this, you know, share the um, the field of um, hoops and um, and obviously you know he's a good player now. So he his strength is cheese. Is he fast? He's Apparently. very fast. Hey. Very fast, yeah. True that. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, so, so he's fast because his brother's a, a winger. Oh, Richard, okay. And um, Hoops is a flanker, but obviously Rich is very fast, so yep. is Hoops. And for flanker, he's very, yeah. What, um, so I was saying before, so by this time, by the time you left school, there was no real intention to try to play rugby over here, eh? Uh, no, when I left school. Oh, sorry. Yeah, when I left school, there's um, I always, as I said, I wanted to explore a bit more of Australian rugby, and I stayed there. But there was always a time there where I questioned myself if um, you know, ITM could be a good um stepping stone as coming back here. Yeah. Or 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 something to um, you know, develop my rugby skills, etc. So that was always at the back of my mind. But um, at the same time, I was you know. While I was trying to play footy as well, I was always also doing my studies, so that was also keeping me in um, Australia as well. Because I've started something, I didn't really want to um, mm. defer it. Yeah. Because you know, as as you know, if you leave it for too long, you start to uh, whether to lose interest in it, and and you start to focus on one thing. So I've always tried to um, keep my uh, studies going as 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 a backup plan. Because yeah. Man, because right now you're a teacher at St Augustine's, eh? Yeah. So, so you would have had to go to uni to do your. Yeah. So I went to uni for about four five years but that's awesome man yeah. it's, it's hard enough to do uni by itself but to do what you've done in rugby and finish uni to be teacher that's awesome yeah so that was, yeah it's pretty cool um, to, to try and balancing that was probably tough what, what did it look like was it just straight study hard out during the day train at night all day for the rest of the week kind of thing pretty much for the week yeah so that was pretty much the lifestyle yeah. for a few years there and, and, it, and it just felt like you're on the go so mm. you know, on the weekends it was almost a bit of a time to re- relax a tad because obviously you had assessments and games and stuff yeah. rugby games but um, yeah for a period there it just felt like I was go 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 and um, yeah. didn't really uh, have time to uh to sit down and rest to be honest but when when you had those moments you just you know, cherish it yeah so so have you been at the Manly Marlins for most of the time yeah so I've been, time? yeah so this, this year was my 10th uh, year at Manly so true and that's a part of the shoot shield yeah shoot shield competition shoot shield and then so what was the you were telling me before what, how, how does it work again so the shoot shield is one comp yeah and then do they still have the Australian rugby championship yeah they that's always um on and off so oh, they started okay. a few years ago and then um, two years ago came back and oh, so oh yeah so yeah. it's actually been canned for a bit yeah so it was canned I don't know what, what, um, why it was can, um, cancelled or canned and then you know it's only been running this is its third year since it started up again oh okay fast it's been off for quite a bit yeah cool so I just want to touch on your injury yeah that massive injury far um no, so, it's pretty small <laughs> so it was a compound fracture eh? yeah it's on your ankle yeah so how did it happen were you were you planted and someone flew in on it or yeah so um 
it was like you said it's a, I, don't, I don't really pass don't know how to so <laughs> made a little break and um, I tried to take on the I dummy so I had a player oh actually I don't remember but apparently yeah. I had a player inside <laughs> and, I, and, and I, did you look at the <laughs> <laughs> and so I looked you know, I did the show and go yeah. you know but I wasn't quick enough to beat the fullback so I dummied and, and I tried I kind of got a, got him off me the um the first time and then he yep. came back for a second go yep. and that's where he kind of jumped onto me and um on your back onto my shoulder yeah and he kind of dragged like pulled me down dragged me down and and that's where my my ankle just got trapped so i got stuck in the in the, in the dirt yeah and he just fell on my ankle as i tried to like push him off me and um yeah which and funny story now the guy that tackled that we were teammates now and we work together so oh is he, is he a teacher yeah true yeah so michael hello <laughs> so so it's in the ground and then it snaps basically yeah. yeah so pretty much it's like my body's on one side my legs out yeah and he lands on top of it if you know what i mean could so. you see like the flesh and stuff to be honest, because oh, I had my so- yeah, so my socks were still on yeah. at, the, at the time, and, <sighs> and when um, medical assistants uh, rushed over, they advised that I, I don't look down. So, hey, yeah. can you? Re- is it just one of those things where the pain? I mean, it's painful, but it's mostly in shock, and then it kicks in later on, kind of thing. Yeah, because a lot of people s- say whether did it hurt. And I don't remember f- the feeling because yeah. I think the shock and numbness just went straight through my body. And, and I, like, it's not like, you know, those ones where if someone punched me, I could feel and go, like, you know, yeah, go, yeah, yeah. Because I read, I read on the internet that, um, I remember when you were in rehab yeah. and, I, and we were messaging because I didn't know what happened yeah. and I was just saying what's up and then I had a look on the internet and it said that I tried to find the footage yeah. and it said that it's it's not allowed to be shown on TV yeah. anymore because it's that gruesome yeah. and it's um it's it's similar to Yao Yi's one eh? yeah. Yao Yi yeah. and that one was that one was bad yeah real bad so <laughs> Yeah, as you, as you mentioned, so because it was a TV game that then, and that's our lo- local derby game against the Ring of Rats, and um, so TV game, and um, apparently the replays they showed it over and over again. Oh. But once they did that, and they couldn't, there was no more footage of it anymore. Did um, so they have to get rid of it? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know whether they got it's probably somewhere in archives or, or yeah. something like that, but they just didn't uh, show it again or etc. So you, you know when you, so you got taken to the hospital. Yeah. You know when all the shock wears off and you know it really sinks in do you remember what you were maybe not exactly thinking but the mindset you were in when it all you know when you realized bloody hell this is this is pretty bad yeah yeah so um i think the first thing that came to mind was like oh i probably won't be able to play again yeah and i like i just go oh was, but like i didn't know how bad the injury was Okay. So, but straight away I'm like, oh, can I, you know, can I um, play again? And and I think, as you know, so my wife mentioned to me, the first thing I wanted to know when I came out of um, surgery was did the team win? So <laughs> it was yeah. Did they? They won that, that day, and um, the the boys were quite upset that the game was delayed for like almost an hour. Oh, so they had to carry on an hour after. after you- yeah. So they all cooled down and had to warm back up again. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was a bit, quite a big delay. They just caught it off but it was probably a good time for the club they made a lot of money because a lot of beers were sold <laughs> <laughs> in the hour and a lot of food so that, that's the only positive of that but um yeah I think that was the only thing I, I obviously because I love playing so much I just didn't want to you were just more worried about when can you get back on yeah when can I get back on and it was more like because rugby's been a big part of me I've always wanted to finish it in my own terms yeah yeah not yeah not in a, in a in such an injury like that and so that was probably the only the only doubt in my head and um and probably what i do now with work etc yeah so you know when so did you have you see so an operation eh? yeah that operation and what they put some metal in you or? so first the first operation was um to straighten the dislocation oh uh, yeah and um i could remember to this day the doctor going oh do you reckon you'll be alright to um, not get any, um, not go, what do you call it? Not go to sleep and then we'll just straight into a few. So no painkillers and I go, mate, you gotta <laughs> put me to sleep and then you can straighten. So they straightened it first <laughs> and then they, they um, had to fix the break with um, plates and screws. Yeah. And then obviously they had to stitch the, um, the cut with, with the bones um, burst out of the skin. Damn, what, what was the hardest part? Might be a dumb question, but what was the hardest part of being injured? 
Uh, I think for me, because I love being young. Sorry, of being so. seriously injured. No, I mean, because you would have had little injuries, yeah. but I mean, like, properly, like, bro, there's no way you're coming back to ages. Yeah, probably, probably the, the what we touched on before, like, um, just a question in my head thinking am I going to play again That's not probably, knowing not knowing whether I can or cannot play play again did and you get advice to not play yeah I did yeah which um, it was funny you said that so our first appointment uh, after I got out of the cast was with one a physio who was a trainee and okay. she um she came over, had a look at my scans, had a look at my foot, etc. And she turned around to me in front, in front of myself and my wife at the time and said um, that I would never be able to play again. Hey! Yeah. And not, you know, not you might, but she said no. No, she goes, you, she goes, you'd be lucky to, um, to even run. On my foot again, and, yeah. and I, you know, you know, my, my wife knows the sort of person I am, and and, and you know um, how driven I I am as yeah. well. So I kind of just looked at her, and she looked at me, and um, she's like, she told me afterwards, she said she was thinking in her head, oh, you don't know my my yeah. uh, husband, you know, and how driven he is. So I kind of used that as a motivation, to be honest, and yeah. and from that. Um, and from that day, I, all the doubts about oh, whether I can play or not left me, and it was hey. all about trying to prove this one physio wrong. True. Yeah. Far out. And man, do, do you know what the usual time period for an injury like that is, or what you were told? Yeah, obviously, it, it, as the rehab um, went on, and um, you know, we saw the improvements, etc. It, yeah. it went from not not being able to play again yeah. and not being able to run again to, oh, maybe you can make a return in, in like two years if everything's all right. Yeah. Or, and then it went to, you know, um, year and a half. And, yeah. then it went, and then it went to 12 months. So so at, at the time, you know, I kind of just try to be strict and keep to all the um, rehab program. And, yeah. and literally every spare moment I had was either doing... Um, rehab at home yep. on the couch etc or in the gym but I mean do you know what like do you know what the what they would usually say to someone yeah probably so it's like two years kind of two years yeah to be kind of normal yeah but, but um to be kind of normal exactly to yeah. uh, to they said it would probably be maybe a year and a half two years just so you can do um normal daily activities hey yeah but they were questioning whether to compete at like it's such a that sort of level a competitive rugby yeah they, they questioned whether I would be able to or not so man I read that you were you were running after six months eh yeah but see so you would have literally have to rehab every spare moment you had eh like yeah. while I mean while you're rehabbing and yeah so as, as I said earlier so I spent literally every if I wasn't <laughs> playing PlayStation yeah or oh, sorry if I was playing PlayStation I was just having a band around my league while I'm playing and, and doing that as well and and um yeah as I said you know w- the good thing is I have so much support around me, the, you know, with my with my uh, wife and and her family and, and the club, the school, and my friends. Yeah, so. I, I saw it all over Facebook. Yeah, all the support they gave. Yeah, so the, it made the um the rehab so much easier because there were people willing to to yeah. help me out, whether to lift to the gym or, or whether they'll come to the gym and, and train with me and help. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just something. Just something. Just you know, having someone there was always a, a positive as well. So I'm guessing that your wife. Not stubborn, but for her to hear what the physio said, she knew straight away. But you don't know what you don't know what this guy's like in terms of you know the physio said you'll yeah. never play rugby again, yeah, or you'll never run again, yeah, yeah. She did. She did. She, so it was you know we pretty much we didn't say it at the moment yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah, the, yeah. in the thing, but we pretty much looked at each other so and nah, then, it's on and and then I said what well, was challenge been set? Let's let's try and uh, oh, crew them wrong. So um, yeah, it was a long long journey. It could have been longer. But, yeah. you know, I was happy for nine months and um, I ended up coming back playing the same game. Against the same team? Against the same team the year after. Far out. So they, they also, you know, leading up to that that game that Saturday because yeah. I kind of knew for, for a week and and the also I kind of used that as my benchmark yeah. my return day oh, okay so you have an as aim. soon as that physio said I was like oh I'm going to sit this as my aim and my target 
and so I kind of knew that I was leading up to this moment and then uh, my my wife and you know all my friends said you know they've never seen me that nervous before on the side I've been yeah. waiting to go on off the bench so yeah because I remember I remember when you came on and I remember someone wrote a big article and they were saying that this is and they're not just saying it like um, loosely but they're saying it's like an, it's a miracle kind of thing yeah. eh? the, that comeback yeah. far out but I think it's was, it was more the, the time period in, in regards yeah, yeah, that's to that's what I mean like, yeah. in that short space short, amount of time short space of time yeah. so, but as, as I said earlier it just made it easier with so much support even you know the surgeon himself was, was very good yeah. in supporting me and, um, and every decision as well and so he kind of helped the, speed up the process by you know every time I was moving forward he'll test me again to see if I can reach another target yeah true so that, that, that helped me along the way so I, as I said you know sometimes whether it's stubborn or driven like it, it's good for me because I like a bit of a few goals to try and yeah. achieve along the way so you know with you know if you had if you had a friend who had the same kind of injury yeah. and they're going through their rehab what would your advice be uh, well, what really helped you and what would your advice be for them I think um, if they want to if they want to you know if they're aiming for the same thing to get through something as fast as possible yeah so I think it's probably strict with your rehab be strict with your be rehab be strict with rehab so like if you as I said earlier if you really want to come back if you set a target that's quite quick in the medical eyes yeah like you got to be real strict with your, with your rehab so you know trying to do at least two rehab sessions a day you know with rehab are there some things that you do that you that you think this isn't even doing anything, but you do it anyway? Yeah. So especially early on as well, because because your your um your body is still suffering from the trauma from the surgery and stuff, you can yeah. only do so much. So even if it's like you know little um like tense, so some of them get you to tense just so you can feel um. Uh, your leg etc and get the blood flowing and, yeah. you know that's early days but that thing, you feel like you're not doing anything yeah, you're sitting there not doing anything but like that's at the same time as I said earlier if you're just sitting there doing PlayStation that's a good time just to do it yeah, when you're sitting on the, in your seat so yeah. just getting um, being real strict with your rehab um, probably the other advice is you know uh, get feedback as okay. well so like not just from um don't just take the whether it's the expert opinion of, of one surgeon or doctor yeah just even if you do it yourself like, you know because it sounds like you've been stalking me for a while but, <laughs> researching researching the um uh the protocols to come back or or, or how we can recover a bit quicker yourself so, yeah. so apply um, yourself and look around yeah so apply yourself and look around support network's a big one yeah so uh, to be honest if I didn't have all that support around me I don't know how I would have done it mm. and, and then the other one is probably just surrounding yourself with positive people because a lot of people can you know because you're so down and you're, you're yeah. in the dumps going oh you know I don't know if I can make it back you know or even questioning oh why me yeah etc if you don't have anyone around you yeah that will bring you up or you know you because a lot of people will isolate themselves at their own home and you know and they might lock themselves in the room and just play playstation or they your negative negative thoughts start to um build up so that's a real thing eh? yeah because a lot of people go through it these days yeah. you know the especially if um the, as you said earlier the expectations of of um of someone to be the next big thing yeah. and they've just slowly cracked it and then they get a big injury that mm. might cost them the career yeah. something that's just started so and and you're always going to you know it's just part of being you know a human you're always going to have doubts and those negative thoughts going oh why me what have I done etc yeah. but if you have you know positive people around you you know just um not telling you that it's gonna be good, but just saying you know how how fortunate you are. You know, yeah, yeah. It could have been worse. You know, then yeah. you could have been life threatening. You know, you're like the the um, the same the same day we had another game. Um, uh, I think it was Sydney Uni versus Parramatta, and one of the Parramatta players had a um, collapsed lung. Hey, yeah, on that same day. Same day. Far. But true. no, and um, he almost died. But lucky there was a, a medic um around who we you know yeah who you know was uh, quick thinking and chucked a, um, a syringe straight down his windpipe so he could breathe. Fuck. 
Well, it's not crazy. sorry, not chuck it, but pierce yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah, to yeah. create a hole and, and air to go um in and out. That's crazy. Yeah. Man. So when you put it into terms like that, you know, sometimes yeah. you just got to be grateful. But they're probably some of the advices that I probably give someone. Um, that's suffering from a major injury and obviously mine happened a bit you know when I'm older as well um, if you're young and it's happened you know there's got plenty, plenty of time, your time I, yep. times you know yeah, uh, in front of you and you've got plenty of time you, to use so it's not all over we you know whereas if you if you did it a bit later in your, age, in your 40 career when you're 27, 28 yeah, you know you don't really much have time and, and your body's not going to probably bounce back as uh, quickly as they used to yeah. so for me at the time yeah probably the age helped as well if I was supposed to get if I was going to get injured with such a gruesome injury again it would probably be tougher to come back yeah. from because uh, you know bodies don't bounce back as quickly and you know so I'll probably start to question oh, is it worth it anymore mm-hmm. yeah, which are probably some of the force that creep in yeah. especially when you're, you're at this age cool so you talked about your comeback game against the same team at the same place same place yeah what was that like what was that what was the morning of it like when you wake up and then you know it's not completely I'm gonna take this off I don't care if you <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> you're sweating here mate. <laughs> <laughs> no like like you know the morning of or when was it the most nervous was it the night before the morning of or you know just when you're you know you're getting ready to come on probably the night before the night before it was it was probably one of those restless sleeps you know you you might have had it as well like when something's been on you bothering you all day or for the past week and you just can't sleep because you're like oh you know it's almost here so that was my feeling like I I knew for like a few weeks that I, I, I should be fine for this game yeah but it wasn't until that moment, the night before the game, that it struck me that um, that you know I'll be waking up and be, I'll be running out that day, the next day, and um, you know, and I was always questioning, and I always had the doubts with us, like you know, did, have I done the the, the work? Has yeah, it been yeah, enough? Yeah, yeah, is it going to be strong? Yeah, you know, is it going to um, take the, the contact, etc. So was it your call to play that week? Oh no! You you made the call a while ago, eh? That, yeah. That so I, so I made the, made the call with myself um, a while ago. I kind yep. of targeted that, but I didn't want to tell anyone because I didn't want the pressure yep. of people going, "Oh, well, you just from the outside." Yeah, from the outside, I was saying, "Look, you, you told us that you're going to be fine for this game. How yeah, are you yeah. feeling?" So it wasn't until maybe two weeks beforehand, and, and I said, I kind of just said to the coach and the medical staff, and go, "Look, I, I'm feeling quite good." Um, I think I could be ready for the game that I said, you know, and I've, I've targeted, and, and you know, they just said, "Well, it's up to you. It's your, it's your body. If you're feeling good, let us know, and we'll start slowly introducing you, into um, putting me into contact and, and yeah. training drills and game-like scenarios." So, how, how can you, how can, can you remember what your ankle felt like on on the, a, on on the, the game? game or when you play? Yeah, so it just probably it felt stiff because yeah. there's so much. Yeah, you know, I was probably overtake myself. I could barely feel my toes, but yeah, um, yeah I was heavily strapped and I just um, felt stiff. But the more the game went on, and you know, it started obviously the tape started to loosen up, and yeah, and I think you know um, a lot of people with big injuries like that might agree as well. Like the, it's more the mental battle as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the mental battle is very, very tough, especially so, you know you start to question, as I said earlier, is it going to be strong enough? So sometimes. Yeah. I try my best at training because well. obviously training is always going to be a bit different to more game sense or, or the game itself yep. but to get tackled but you're always a bit hesitant you know, yep. to run full or full belt change direction, or eh? change direction as well So, but the ankle felt fine and I think it was maybe 10 minutes into the game my thoughts went away from my ankle and it's, oh, it was hey. more just trying to do my job and and then from there my confidence started to grow and the doubts about whether it was strong enough whether I've done the right rehab started to slowly creep away did you do a full game that year? I did a full game that year, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. So the first game was half a, like, half a game, and then the following week I did a full game. Oh, the yeah. next week? Yeah. Man, that's amazing, eh? Yeah, so I was... Uh, so know, that was, was 2016? 2016, and then 2017 uh, was the year I, I came back and played. Far out. Okay. So, so you're playing club, and... You know, just to play club after that injury is is enormous. Yeah. But you got to play for Tonga as well. Yeah. So how how what year was that? 
that was, Tonga would have been sorry I think that injury was 2016 yes you're right yeah and then when did you play for Tonga 2017 how, how did that come about because I remember I remember you saying before it was a bit of a last minute thing eh yeah so mate, it was, to be honest it was, it was um, unexpected uh, oh we, really yeah it was unexpected I didn't um Actually, really, like I, I wasn't expecting to get a, a call up. So, as you know, Dan, you're, you're Italian, eh? You're not. Italian. <laughs> I'm Italian and French. <laughs> but um, as you know, they do the Tomlin competition here. They also do one. Yeah. In, they, oh, they yeah, also do one in um Sydney. So are they scouting at those comps too. So what happened was, it was pretty cool. They, what they did was the winner of the Sydney comp. Yeah. Went and played the winner of the Brisbane comp. Mm. And because the coach that. Coach then, who's still the coach now, um, Toto Kefu, he was um, obviously he's from Brisbane. Yeah. So he happened to be at the game uh, when we played. Um, oh, the yeah. winner versus winner. Yeah. So it was like they called it Sydney Tonga versus Brisbane Tonga. Yeah. And he happened to be at the game, and like he came before the game and just spoke to us and said, "Look, we're we're not saying that there's opportunities for the end of year tour of Tonga yeah. of the UK." Um, you know, and there might not be, but um, just want to lean and wish you all the best and, um, you know, enjoy the game, etc. So there wasn't no guarantees or or there was no mention of, of, look, we're looking at any players in particular or any selection opportunities. Why would he say that for? I mean, like... Because I, I think he felt like... Did people, that would people have people, hopes? Oh, yeah. okay. So it was mentioned to a lot of players from both sides that, oh, okay. that he was going to be there. Yeah. And, and a lot of... Um, outside sources are saying oh he's going to select a few oh, players okay. to, yeah. to take with him so I kind of just said oh look I'm just going to go enjoy the game yeah. and um, go home and, and it'll be, it'll, you know, it's fine it's just another game of footy and then it wasn't until I think it was two weeks later where I got a call from him saying oh you know from uh, him from him yeah mm. got a call from him saying look how would you like to um to come on the end of year tour to to Europe with us, ah, yeah. True. So that was I was at work at the time, and I just said, "Oh, at the moment, you know, you know, pretty buzzing." Yeah. And when I was when I received the phone call, and and I'm pretty proud. So um, first thing I had to try and do is get. Um, I said, "Oh, can I have a bit a bit of time? Like I'll get back to you that night." So try and arrange things with work. Yeah. Then obviously told my um, my wife, my family, and and, and stuff, etc. Just for a bit of advice, you know, should I go, etc. Oh, so you, so it wasn't a straight yes. It wasn't a straight yes, I just had to think of a few things oh, yeah. at first, like, um, because, uh, you know, there is a little bit of sacrifice in regards to, yeah. as you know, the financial and other people, side of things and other as well. people will be sacrificed yeah. to you too, So, um, I had to, uh, have, I don't really have to think about it, but I just wanted to make sure, make sure whether, yeah. um, you know, I really wanted to do it, you know, yeah. it was something I wanted to do, but it, at the end of the day, it was, it was something that um, was worthwhile, and, and I'm quite glad that I went. That's me, yeah, man. So, as I said, it was unexpected, but it was something to um, be proud of and, and represent my, you know, my heritage and obviously um, my family's uh, country. It's me. Okay, well, don't, I'll let you go soon. I just uh, I had one question um, because it was the same question I asked Jamie. Yeah. It was that if, because, oh, I'll have two questions for you. So Two? Yeah, two. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> they know you're married, bro. <laughs> no. Happily. Um, <laughs> happily married. Happily. Um, so the first one is, you know when you've got, I, might, you, I think you, already, you might have already answered it. So, you know, you've got a lot of talented kids yep. who are really talented. And then you've got, you know, rep sides. And you know a lot of the kids don't make it. Yeah. What, is the gap between that talent and the rip sides that commitment you're talking about, or are there other or are there other things that you'd like to touch on? Yeah. So as you said, like um, commitments. You know, whether it's commitment or hard work or being driven. Yeah. Is, is, is um can separate individuals. Yeah. In regards to being strict to whether it's their training re- regime or, or their diet or their rehab. Yeah. But I think there's also other factors that so can. There det- are other factors. Yeah, there okay. are other factors that can determine as well. You know, sometimes, as you know, unfortunately in the sporting world, there's always politics. Yeah. Again, and that might have to. Or it's in every world. Yeah. 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 So unfortunately, or every sport. Yeah. You know, there's always going to be the politics side of things, and um. 
and the, it could be the relationships you know so yeah. you might have, you or myself might, I might have a better relationship with the coach or like you had a better relationship with Nick <laughs> that's why you got chosen in front of um, in, my, in front of myself but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately there's a lot of um, variables or factors that can play um, okay so it's not as simple not as simple yeah okay. but, but if you put your, if you you know you can put your best foot forward through all that hard work and your preparation that you, you've done yeah uh, and, and obviously if you're good enough you'll show on the field yeah but sometimes you know unfortunately you, you get those instances where if it's between you and another player yeah the other player that might have someone kick yeah, in yeah. Oh, okay. those other factors might come into play okay. um, unfortunately unfortunately yeah, yeah. But, oh, okay um, cool and yeah as I said some, one of them might just be the relationship or the coach likes him better than, than yeah. you or or um, likes you better than them yeah yeah or the um the name yeah you know as, as you know you know whether you got a last name you know whether it's uh, McCall and someone else and and you know if you um for father's legacy etc so yeah okay cool so there's a lot of factors there as well cool another one um that we asked with Jamie is that we'd like to ask with you is um I asked them that you know if 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 he could pick a couple of people that he knew or then that we both knew or he picked people that we both knew but he, if he could pick a couple of people that he knew that you know they're really talented and if they had an opportunity obviously we're not for you know we can't tell what will happen in the future we don't know if they'll crack it yeah. but you know with their talent if they were given an opportunity they would be likely to make something of it yeah. like do you does anyone come to mind for you he picked he said Junior you remember Junior Persona? Yeah. He that's who he picked and he said his brother or Eddie Purcell. That's okay. who, that's who he felt. Yeah. You know, and it's we gotta say we're not we're not we don't know the future what would happen, but that's who we felt it, you know, would have been likely to make something of it. Do yeah. you does anyone come to mind for you? Um, I think um Tavita would have been good. Oh Tavita, yeah. he's oh, he, he's the man, eh? Yeah. yeah. I think you would have been good just to be given like you know an opportunity to you know whether to join an academy to prove themselves yeah you, you know um because i you know i think he's always had the the skills yeah and the speed and like his toughness is man you know something about him he's humble yeah but he's but when he wants to be really arrogant in that way he can turn it on eh? yeah like in a good way yeah so like yourself <laughs> 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 oh, cool! Yeah, yeah. Tavita. Yeah, so Tavita would have been a, um, a good one. Um, uh, I'm just trying to refer back to a few of the boys in our, you know, the Roscoe team who, you know, yeah, who? Jamie's obviously gone. You know, um, I don't know whether he's uh, what do you call it? Uh, you don't think of yourself, me. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, no, you know, no, no. as you mentioned earlier, in regards to Jamie, not a lot of people would have expected. Mm. Well, he wouldn't have been a name they'd put. Yeah. And that's... I, I probably would say Jamie and his brother. Oh, okay. Adam. Yeah. Because I know, uh, you know, Adam's made a few rep teams yeah, as well. Yeah, well, he made the Roosters to yeah. Adam Henry. Okay, cool. So they're probably two guys, because obviously I played with them in club footy as well when yeah, I first, um, and then I, I before I went to started at um, Roscoe and then we played school footy together mm. so they're probably two um, two or brothers that um, that have come out of if you reverse it have, you know at school you, you would have probably I'm not saying it yeah, yeah, bad yeah, way you probably yeah, would have yeah. said oh there would have been other names you chucked yeah up. other names you chucked up but now yeah through maybe well it's hard work that they both put in yeah they've grown down a pathway that not many people would have expected them mm. to go down Oh, cool. fulfilled but um you know and, and probably the the other one is uh, you know the Malachi Otita <laughs> <laughs> very very fast and light on his feet bro when I guess you that's what I'm saying mate if, I reckon if he chucked you on the wing <laughs> you would have been de- you would have been deadly shut up you made fun of my hair <laughs> okay was there anything um so going forward you're doing man I'm really proud of you man you got your teaching degree you're teaching yeah pretty happy with that, that yeah man that's awesome years, man yeah. because a lot of people think sport and that's them yeah but you know that's awesome yeah because as, as you said like and it's probably like some advice for you for young um 
athletes, you know, like a lot of people at the time are probably uh, clouded by the thought of just all they're going to do is, or all they're going to become is a rugby or an athlete. Yeah. And they never, they some of them don't know, have that backup plan. For me, you know, for, as, as, as I said earlier with the, and as you mentioned with the injury, mm. if I didn't have a backup plan and all I was focused on was rugby, you know, there was no, there was no plan B. I wouldn't be uh, financially supported. Yeah. If I didn't, you know, have my degree, which yep. and, and which has helped me uh, get a teaching job, and now you know I don't really have to rely on trying to be that superstar athlete and earn yeah. that much money or earn that money that that comes with that profession, mm. where I can fall, you know, fall back and just do something I enjoy, which is teaching and being outdoors as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, man, Tony. Bro, <laughs> never, nah, nah, honestly, bro, thanks heaps, man. Honestly, everyone, this guy, he is a lovely, lovely guy. He's, he's done a lot. So, you know, to do with Katoni's highlights and stuff like that, I will post it in the um, in the description. But Donnie, thanks heaps for your time, bro. I really appreciate it. All the best, man. Uh, pleasure, mate. Thank you for having me and uh, you know, coming up with such a great mission.